Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a pen from Faber-Castell. It is the Faber-Castell Grip and this is the 2011 all black model. So the Faber-Castell Grip uh, is obviously from Faber-Castell. It's one of their sort of more uh, entry level uh, student design pens. But it's a really nice one. It comes in a number of variations uh, from uh, numbered 2010 or 2011 uh, and many colours and colour combinations. There's blues, there's reds, there's ones that have different accents on these little uh, grip points. There's a gold version. There's even a calligraphy version if that is what you're into with different nib sizes and stuff like that. The grip design with these little like, you know, sort of a little dots on the barrel uh, runs across a number of different products. Um, here I have uh, the Faber-Castell uh, catalog, 2020 product catalog for Australia, uh, and here's the Grip Classic uh, and all of that in the Grip pens. Um, and uh, but also, if you look at like for instance here, you get this is where the the Grip pencil. Yeah, so you get like a range of sort of grey lead pencils with those same sort of dots, uh, as well as everything down to even. Uh, there's an eraser here, which uh, has sort of the dots on it and is called the Grip Eraser. Talking about the fountain pen here, I've still got the label on the side there, um, which says that it's an EF, extra fine, so that's what we've um, got here, made in Slovenia. Um, Faber-Castell being a German company since 17... 61 as the barrel says there was nice little simple branding on there doesn't stand out too much but it's very clear um but let's talk about this uh fountain pen on the top we have the uh, logo there uh, in this nice little dimpled um little cap uh, like a spring loaded clip it's fairly stiff and doesn't feel incredibly strong but certainly it's usable and uh, you know not a problem the cap is mostly cylindrical and the barrel of the pen is fairly straight as it tape as it goes down with these little dimples on it but it is a triangular shape um, so it's that grip same again that grip model is mostly things in that sort of triangular shape so you've got a, a round cylindrical cap and then this sort of like slightly triangular rounded triangle body of the pen um, the pen is a snap cap Nice little click, uh, and it latches on in the cap um, onto these points around the uh, base of the nib. The grip section is triangular as well. It's all a rubberized plastic. Um, it's not super triangular, nothing like the Lamy Safari or anything like that, but just enough to help guide you into a sort of a triangular grip. It has a black steel nib, and as I said, this is an extra fine. And with the standard sort of uh, Faber-Castell branding on a low, you know, design on the nib with those little dimples uh, and the logo. So the pen is mostly plastic, like the cap is plastic, the grip is sort of like plastic, the barrel is plastic, the only metal on the pen is the nib, even the feet is plastic, um, uh, and the clip. Um, it screws to, you know, to reveal, in this case, a converter. It is a cartridge, con uh, a cartridge, sorry. It is a cartridge converter pen, um, and it is, you know, like... Standard international, although not all standard internationals are standard, um, but it doesn't come with a converter, which for me is always a problem with any pen. Now I understand that in the you know Faber-Castell is a German company, and this is probably primarily designed as a pen for use at school, um, and cartridges are convenient, and that is the main source of uh, ink that is used. Um, you know, in schools and things like that. So in Australia, this retails for 30 to 35 on some of the sites I've seen uh, it on. Um, UK sites, I've seen it at 15 pounds uh, and US sites around the 25 US dollar mark. So it places it in an interesting point. In Australia, it is considerably cheaper than something like Alami Safari. Uh, it does compete with the Alami Safari and those sorts of pens uh, in other uh, countries in terms of price, but here in Australia, it does put it a little cheaper. It, as I said, without the converter, you'd have to add one, but you'll have to do that with the Lamy anyway. So it comes with a range of nibs from extra fine through to broad, primarily in fine and medium. Uh, most stockers sort of seem to have, um, but you can get uh, the, them in extra fine through to broad if you manage to find somewhere, or they might be able to order it in. Um, let's look at it now in comparison to a couple of other pens just in terms of size. So here I have it alongside a Lamy Safari and a Twisby Eco. Now, um, so, you know, fairly standard size pen, the Lamy Safari coming in around 140 millimeters. So you can see it sits in that nice sort of area quite well. 
uncapped, once again, it measures in roughly around the same. And also there's a similar girth to the pen, at both barrel and in the grip section. So if this is a size pen that you are uh, comfortable with and you like, but you want something a little less, like that triangular grip to be a little less pronounced, then the grip is actually a really, really solid option. There's not a huge difference in weight either, like three grams. Um, and if we go posted, uh, you'll see that, uh, you know, it's, once again, you know, there's not a huge amount of difference between these two pens. Um, even in build quality, I don't think there's a huge amount of difference. The only issue I would see is that the clip on the Lamy Safari is probably a little uh, stronger. Like, it, it does post, and quite securely, but it does make quite a long pen as well. Um, but I don't think it's the sort of pen that you'd need to uh, have posted. It does fit very nicely sort of in the hand. It's very, very light though. It's all made of plastic and you know, just with that cartridge in there, it is pretty light. But um, just in terms of the measurements here, so capped, it's 138 millimeters. So just under that sort of standard, like what I call the standard Lamy 140 mark. Um, uncapped, it's 129. So it is a nice size. And then posted, it's 169. So it is a little sort of long, but because the cap is so light, it certainly doesn't put the balance off. Um, it just moves the balance slightly back because the balance when it's unposted uh, is actually really nice. It fits, it feels nice in the hand. It feels like you sort of lose the pen in a way. Uh, you don't feel the weight of it, uh, which allows you know for less hand stress and things like that when writing. The diameter of the grip section in the comfortable area is about 10.5 to 11. So it's actually pretty comfortable, um, but it does have, as I said, it does have a slight triangular shape uh, to the to this uh, grip section there. The weight of the pen is 15 grams uh, in total, 10 in the body, five in the cap. So, so here I have some uh, Clairefontaine 90 gram paper. Uh, and what we have here is the Faber-Castell. Grip. And I'll say it's the 2011 All Black. This is an st a steel extra fine nib. And the ink in here is just a Faber-Castell blue cartridge. Okay, now I said this is extra fine. It is pretty fine. Like, by European standards, that is like, that is super fine. Um, and I like that. It's not, now it's not a wet pen. Um, like it lays down a, certain, a nice amount of ink, but I would like it is probably by nature of the fact that it is an extra fine on the drier side. And if you're listening, there is feedback. Now I'm not; it's not scratchy, but there is feedback. And occasionally, I want to say, I'm not saying it's scratchy because it doesn't dig into the paper, but it's just a little bit sort of grippy occasionally on the page. But that is, you know, definitely, um, just a little bit of right hand just for the sake of the exercise, just scribbles. Um, like, it's just, it, a lot of that is just because it is an extra fine nib and such an extra fine nib. They're sharper on the page. The nib on the grip uh, is the same as the nib on, uh, like, the new Hexo, for instance. Um, and, uh, you know, which is slightly different to the nibs that are on the, the loom, uh, but, uh, you know, having used Faber-Castell nibs across a range from extra, extra fine through to broad, they are well, you know, tuned and nice nibs, and this does write very, very well. It's very stiff, like, you know, if we're just going to do a couple of those other little bits and pieces, like, um, like, you aren't going to get flex out of this at all, like, that's not the design of it, you just put down more ink. Um, and, you know, to be honest, it's not pleasant to do that with reverse writing. Um, it's even finer again, uh, but not super scratchy, not super dry, just super, super fine. Fast writing. Like, you can see it keeps up. It's just not the wettest pen, but in a way, that's also one of its, you know, it can be an advantage, particularly if you're a student uh, and not writing on 90 gram Clairefontaine paper. 
if you're writing on standard student notepad paper, this pen actually is probably gonna be a pretty good option. Let's talk pros and cons. Okay, I only have really like two cons. First one is the fact that uh, the nib is not as smooth as the extra fine that I've had on the loom, for instance. Um, this nib is has a bit more feedback. And if that's something that you're not keen on, then something you might wanna look at, maybe get a slightly, you know, a, a fine or a medium instead of the extra fine. Um, uh, but, you know, it's perfectly right away. And as you saw, like, it lays down a nice amount of ink and it's, you know, reliable. Uh, another issue is that it doesn't come with a converter. This is an issue for me. Let's talk about the pros. It's affordable. Without a converter, it's 30 to 35 Australian dollars. Like, it's cheaper than a Safari or a, or a, uh, an Eco. It's around the same price as a Pilot Metropolitan. So that's actually kind of great. Um, it's reliable and consistent. It always writes. I've been writing with this pen for two weeks. It writes and writes. Like, and because it's so fine, like, you use so little ink. You know, like, you you know, so you are going to be able to write with this pen for a long time, which does put it into that for me. Like, if I was a uni student again, uh, and, write, yes, writing on perhaps slightly more affordable paper, uh, or even just the paper you get given, uh, and, you know, having an extra fine nib like this that just, you know, uses so little ink, this is a wonderful option. Um, I like, I really like the size of the model. I think that the, you know, like it fits nicely in the hand. It's sort of got a decent girth on it. Um, and being super light and comfortable means that you can write for a long time with a pen like this. Um, you know, so yeah, it's, and being so light and being, you know, quite durable, like it doesn't feel flimsy at all. Like, yes, I probably wouldn't run over it with my car, but you know, for everyday carry, throwing it in a backpack, putting it in your pocket, that sort of thing, I think this is a really good option. So this was the Faber-Castell Grip 2011 All Black, the extra fine nib. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter uh, at, at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can drop me an email or comment on any of my videos here. Uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way I'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, get in touch, let me know, and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.